Beard Show. Hey, it's another beautiful day here on the farm, here in my basement. I always say that at the beginning of the show. Maybe I should explain. Every day alive is another day in paradise, because what you have around you is paradise. And what I have around me is super special, and I'm thank you, thankful every day for that. Now, I also want to thank my sponsors, Vancouver Seed Bank and Toker's Lounge in Vancouver. They got the sickest list of seeds on the internet, and I hope that you get on the internet to check it out. It's VancouverSeedBank.ca. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to be planting this summer. It's time to plant your outdoor, folks. All right, now, uh, I also want to thank my other sponsors, Kind Selection Extracts, Shatterbeard Extracts, Dirty Dave Limited for these amazing t-shirts. If you want one like this, head down to CCHQ at 307 West Hastings, Vancouver. Now also I want to announce I got a new sponsor and I'm super proud and happy to have Remo Brand Nutrients on board. Uh, Remo has been a good friend of mine for some time and I'm super happy to support him and his new venture with uh, making nutrients and uh, glad to work with him. He's the best pot grower I know and uh, I trust the man and he's an honest hard working man and Sandra, a beautiful family. So happy to support those folks. So. Hey ho, Remo Nutrients on board. So, uh, special episode today. We're finishing up the auction on uh, Facebook uh, for this bong here that I completed. This was made over the last two episodes of the Red Beard Show. This is the Cookie Monster bong. It's got the uh, dome attachment there with the 18 mil right there. And that's an adapter with the removable downspout. I kind of prefer that method most of the time. If you got room to do it, it's just really great for cleaning. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with how this turned out. Right now the bidding is up to $2,600. And all, every penny of that money is going to uh, Owen Smith's legal battle. He's challenging the, uh, well, he's going all the way to Supreme Court, challenging the government, challenging the rules surrounding extracts. And uh, yeah, this auction will be closing in about 15 minutes. So we'll be keeping an eye on that. And uh, I thought in the meantime, we'll just get ready to pull some tube. Uh, as far as glass techniques today, we're gonna be looking at the prep work technique of stick stack tube pulls. Uh, there's a couple different ways of doing this. You can engage a vacuum, uh, you don't have to. I never do actually, oh, I've done both, but I don't do the vacuum anymore. Uh, maybe it's laziness, maybe it's just being stuck in my ways, I don't know, but uh, I, I'll teach you how I do the, the uh, stick stack, and uh, yeah, it should be fun. So, fasten your seat belts, get ready for a fun show. Cheers to y'all. I got myself a, a potent IPA in the mug today, a 9.1% Imperial. Woohoo! Numbskull. I really like the label got me thinking of a uh, numb skull got me thinking of the Grateful Dead see that skull that's who we hear playing in the background today I don't know about you but I got my tickets ordered mail order for the 50th anniversary of the Grateful Dead concert happening in Chicago so I just want it from now until July you're gonna hear this a lot probably on my show but if you are in the Chicago neighborhood and you want to host Redbeard and the bus at your place if you got a place for me to park the bus I'm all about it. Give me a holler, please. Looking for some place to park the bus in Chicago for the Grateful Dead. I'm stoked. Gonna be going on tour down to the States and back up through Canada. So uh, I'm gonna get inflating a vapor bag behind me while I get chatting. And we're gonna chat a little bit about uh, color selection. I also wanna talk about the outdoor seed selection. It's time to get your mom started. If you're just doing uh, the five plant uh, anti-conservative movement uh, system you probably don't need to start them now unless you want to get some monsters but uh, yeah if you want to start your moms and get ready for your outdoor season now's the time so get a hold of Vancouver Seed Bank and start picking out your genetics I know I am stoked to uh, get on to that so uh, I'm just checking the chat room making sure everything's working all right it looks like we got perfect streaming awesome no problems with the internet today. I pulled out some uh, some head stash here from the, uh, this is aged almost six months this herb. And uh, it's labeled Sour G, but I knew 
right away as I opened it, this is actually the Time Warp Berry. Time Warp Cross Blueberry, I guess. And boy, it's super dry. I better put a little bit in my beer mug too. Super dry. I'm not sure if these uh, jars got the best seal ever, but super cool jar. Check that out from the TY. Yeah. All right, and also at the same time, I'm gonna pack my vapor bag. So I'm really stoked about this auction. The piece turned out great. I'm really happy with it. I'm really proud of myself. Here we are, we're raising 2,600 bucks for a, a legal battle that shouldn't fucking happen. Imagine this, a government uh, ruling that the uh, the medical part of the plan, oh, that that part's illegal. Don't, don't take that out of the plan. You know, like you gotta have your whole plant medicine. Whole plant medicine is great. Smoking herb is great. But extracting the crucial THC, CBD, all of the uh, terpenes, all of the different cannabinoids, that's what we're talking about here. It's a matter of uh, making tea with your herb. Your tea bag is still legal, but now the tea is illegal. That's the situation we face in Canada right now. So, stoked to do some work to uh, change those rules. And uh, yeah, get to work, eh? I'm gonna try and move my uh, volcano a little closer here. There we go. Multitasking. Because I want to show you the colors I've picked out today. So when we're doing stick stack, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a bunch of uh, color sticks to about oh, four or five inches in length. I'm going to stack those around a carbon rod. I'm going to use a couple of elastics to hold it in place. And then I'm going to basically weld it to a tube. And then I'm going to shove it inside this larger size diameter. This is 50 by 5, 5 millimeter wide thickness and 50 millimeters diameter. And so then I'm gonna melt all the bubbles and air out of it, one direction to the other. And uh, yeah, and that's how we get this type of thing. This is the prep work that pretty much starts everything. I think we've done a little bit of this on the show before, but we're gonna just get into more detail today. So a stick stack can be a solid color, like this one here, which is all green right throughout. And uh, this one here is a fade to clear. This was the uh, bronze uh, third place uh, tubing for the Karma Cup. And this was the second place tubing for the Karma Cup, just like a blue and silver. So I think we'll do a fade to clear today. I'll show you how we do that. And uh, yeah, so let's see. This potato bag takes a long time to fill up. It's pretty big. But you know, when you're this big, they call you a mister. Pretty funny, eh? All right, well, uh, impatient me, I think I'll just have to hit the hit the mug. Stoked to hit some extracts with you actually today. I uh, got a beautiful uh, mail from uh, Shatterbeard. Oh yeah, delicious. Another beautiful day. Dang, it's, uh, I'm up in the clouds today. It's super foggy out. Low visibility. I love it. It's like Lord of the Rings out there or something. All right. Get my vapor in me. I was just gonna kind of chill till 420 and try to end this auction and then we'll spark this uh, big flame up and get to work on that uh, two pull. So let me just walk you through the steps of uh, how I lay out the color. I always grab a piece of paper and snap my color onto that, kind of less dust on it, but also uh, there's the sketch for the uh, Cookie Monster piece. But also just to uh, give myself a measurement, a lot of guys probably build jigs for this and then snap the rods so they're all uniform in size. But basically what's going to judge my color length is the size of the tubing. So just going to lay this tubing down on this clear sheet and mark a line about a half an inch shorter than the tube. See that from the, from the shoulder of the tube up? I just made a little mark there. I'm just going to use that mark to measure my color sticks. This is how I've always done it. Oh, 
great, but then it's getting loud on here. I better turn it down. There we go. So, uh, a bit of a trick getting all the color to fit in perfectly. All right, so let's see, where's that color I picked out? So let's talk about the color I picked out actually real quick. If you're ever at a loss of picking out color or perhaps you're slightly colorblind like me, ha, I am actually. But uh, it's always a good bet to go with, uh, one thing I think of is corporations. Those motherfuckers spend a million dollars to figure out what colors to freaking use on their logo. So you know, uh, I often say this one's Ikea colors, right? Blue and yellow. McDonald's, red and yellow. Frick, just think of a ma massive corporation. You got your colors, the Ford, blue and white, you know? So just think of those guys for one. Also, nationality, color of flags. People freaking love buying, they don't even know they're doing it, but like for instance, I picked out, I believe the uh, Italian colors here. We got some yellow, green, and white. There's several flags out of that, I believe Mexico. But uh, so that's always something to think about. And just whatever feels good, whatever comes to mind. Sometimes it's fun just to do a total clash, but I always try to do uh, some contrast in color. A bit of dark, a bit of light. Anyway, so now we've picked out our color. Let's snap some lengths of it. Now I'm gonna do a fade to clear. So I'll probably need about seven or eight sticks of color. If you're gonna do full color all the way around, I think you need about 14 or 15. So uh, I've got my disc nippers in hand. These are the tools to use for cutting color. I'm just going to lay my uh, thing down on the piece, of my color down on the piece of paper, mark it with my thumb, and then I'm just going to snap it right there. So I'm going to go with uh, four pieces of green. Yeah, I think four green. We'll go with maybe two yellow. And then I think two white. There we go. So the white's about the thinnest. Let's talk about the diameter of these colors. It's pretty important when you get into it. Uh, uh, the diameter of the colors, they got to be roughly six to seven millimeters. Uh, and if you get off of that much, you're gonna have to play around with your inner core diameter as well as your outer core diameter. So this is what's happening and we're gonna put color around that. So it's gotta fit as snug as we can without too much room in there. The more room in there, uh, the more air you gotta chase out. Okay, so now we've got our colors selected. Let's have a look at those. And I think we'll uh, do two green with a white on the outside, I was thinking, with the two yellow in the middle, just like that. So I'm just gonna arrange it in my hand, just like that. So I'll just set these down for a second, because now with a fade to clear, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can just elastic that on, slam it in there and get melting. But uh, what I always do is I actually use, uh, I snap some clear rod and put that down in there as, the, as clear filler. Just like you've got the color sticks, I put uh, clear sticks down there. And as long as they're nice and clean, and here's where you should have uh, alcohol and, uh, and, a, and, a, and a rag to really clean these well. Every little bit of dust shows up. So do as I say, not as I do. Make sure you clean these really well. So I'm just gonna snap a bunch of these sticks the same size, using the other ones for measurement, that line I drew. I just need a bunch of these clear. All right, I think I'll need a couple more than that. Snap a bit more here. The old armpit swipe is what uh, us old school guys learn to do just the right amount of moisture. Let's see. All right, so I think we got enough sticks now. 
Yeah. Now we've got to arrange it on our uh, stick. All right, 416, I see in the chat. Those guys are keeping an eye on it for me. It looks like the high bid's still at 2600. Pretty exciting. And again, this is the piece that we're bidding on. C is for cookie, that's good enough for me. C is for cannabis, legalize me. What the fuck, eh? So, as Ted Smith has explained, and I hope you do, uh, I don't have any links to quote you, but uh, Ted Smith has done some great talks, and actually on the last uh, Jeremiah show, CCN Live, Ted really explained how this case that we're funding here, it could be a real groundbreaker. This could be a monumental case. This could really open the, uh, the Supreme Court, you know, decision could really lay down some uh, groundwork here for us. So. I'm excited about what it might, what it will bring, and uh, I encourage y'all. I, I noticed someone in the chat said, "Oh, geez, too rich for my blood." Well, what could you afford? Let me just ask you that. What could you afford? Can you afford 20 bucks? You want 20 bucks? 20 bucks? How about you just throw that 20 bucks in their GoFundMe account right now, and uh, think of yourself as a better person because of it, because you are, and that's all it takes. They have a GoFundMe cannabis extracts in Canada. And uh, someone can throw that link up for me on the chat right before me, but it's an easy Google search. Go fund me, Owen Smith's cannabis extracts in Canada. And just go donate 10 bucks, five bucks, 20 bucks, anything you can. I challenge you all to just take the minute and drop a bit of money in there. Their goal isn't that large. I think they're expecting and hoping to raise 10,000 bucks. Well, here we've got a quarter of the way there. So let's see what you can do. I challenge ya. Anyway, let's see, okay, 418, hey ho, it's gonna happen. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab, I've got several different carbon rods, so I can always change sizes. This one's slightly smaller than this one. I use a carbon rod in the center. Now if I was doing a back stack, I would use 25 mil tubing in the center. I would just put that right in the center and then it stays in the center and you melt that shit right in there and draw it out. So when you do that back stacks, you've got a clear core surrounded by color and then clear again. It's a really good method. It spreads out your color a bit. Depends on the color, but sometimes you can actually thin your color a bit too much. So you might want to think about that. But uh, all right, so let's just hold this in my hand here. I know I've got too many sticks, but I'll take the extra out in a sec. And all I'm gonna do is wrap it around that tube just in one motion. Oh, this one's fell out, so just rearrange it. Too many clears. So there we got it. Now the best elastics for this job are my girlfriend's hair elastics. Sorry, Mrs. Beard. She's always wondering where they all go. They're going into the shop. Hair elastics are the best. They melt the least, uh, quickest. That cloth covering is awesome. But. Uh, Alright, hey, happy 420, folks. Time for a dab, I'd say. Now, boy, oh boy, my hardest decision here is which dab to have. And uh, I gotta tell you, I'm gonna try this one right here. I haven't tried it yet. This is the Girl Scout Cookies by Shattered Beard Extracts. And uh, I haven't had it yet, bro. I'm looking forward to it. It's real sugary, real waxy. It's not a shatter. Be perfect if I had a working vape pen. You know, I need a vapor pen sponsor. Uh, I've had a couple good pens, but they seem to keep breaking. So if anyone wants to throw me a vape pen to try on the air, holla. So again, glass blower's trick. I'm keeping my glass nail in the kiln. Lasts a little longer. Yeah, happy 420. So the auction is closed as long as someone didn't jump in on a bid. So we'll have the uh, VSB crew take a look at the auction for me, or I'll have a look in a minute if I get a hand free. And uh, well, let's see who won this bad boy. So I'm using this dirty old dome still, pardon my uh, dirty equipment. Yeah, that's delicious. Tasty, that's interesting. I've never tasted Girl Scout cookies before. 
<coughs> I know it's got a bit of a bit of a hype on the internet. Yeah, that's pretty darn good. It's, more, it's earthier than I imagined. Like if you had told me that was a Jack Herrera cross, I wouldn't believe you. <coughs> that's delicious. <coughs> it was a big dab. I got a little greedy. Lungs were bigger than my face. Gonna put my nail back in the kiln. That's how we glass blowers do it. Glass nails. All right, so let me just check the old chat. We got uh, 2,600, I believe. And uh, ho ho, I don't see anything new on that. So <coughs> no, I'm still I'm still working with my backup kiln. It's a piece of shit kiln with no temperature. And I, but, I gotta tell you, it was a long night of kiln sitting with this bad boy. I had to sit there and I turned all the lights off. And you like peek through the door of the kiln and oh yeah, it's starting to glow. So we know it's getting up to, uh, you know, damn close to 1100. So then I hovered the temperature there for an hour. I sat there having dabs and, and beers and good things. And then I uh, turned it down, and yeah, I just did the manual uh, down to 900 for an hour, so a bit worried about that But uh, it, before I did it, but as I did it, it turned out fine. So yeah, and the good news is I am in discussion to uh, get a kiln camera going, and I've approached the AIM Kiln Company, and uh, we're just working out the fine details now, folks, but uh, the newest sponsor on the Red Beard Show could be AIM Kilns. That's a little preliminary, jumping the gun on that one, but I got a pretty stoked. They got some new models coming out, so I might have to test and uh, check them out. Give you the feedback, you know. So, uh, cheers and happy 420, and uh, congrats to the winner of that bong. Maybe I'd better just check myself here while we uh, while we toast each other and... Uh, oh, what did I just do there? Oh, well, I closed it. So pardon me while I just go on the uh, internet for a minute, have some, uh, have some vapors. Let's see what we got. Just go onto the auction page. If you want to check out the auction page, it's at the Redbeard Glass Facebook page. And you may be saying, why Facebook? I'm not on Facebook. Well, I am. I'm a Facebook junkie. And so you just got to deal with my, my junkieism, my Facebookism. Sorry. So uh, anyway. I'll, one day I'll get a smartphone and I will get uh, onto Instagram. I know y'all are over at Instagram, but I ain't. Not yet. Okay, so I see still that Dan Jessup with 2600 and I'm just scrolling down, and I am not seeing any other bids higher than that. I thought perhaps we were going to have John Marcel pop back in and get bidden. Oh, Rob's bid of 3,000 10 minutes ago. All right, well, someone just emailed me and said Rob bid 3,000 10 minutes ago. So, there it is, Rob Wadden. Holy shit. Ha <laughs> ha. Looks like Rob Waddell. Waddell. Rob Waddell. That looks like the winner. Rob Waddell. That's awesome. Looks like Rob Waddell. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm gonna declare Rob Waddell the winner. And uh, congratulations to Rob and cheers and geez, thanks for the support. Uh, I, I enjoyed putting the time into it. I hope you enjoyed uh, donating to the cause and and uh, and yeah, that's awesome. I'm just gonna pull up the Pot TV chat again. Excuse me for just a sec, folks. I'm still here. Oh yeah, we're on it. I closed my uh, chat window by accident, so. Anyway, killer. So, it looks like we have raised $3,000 for Owen Smith's case. That's what it looks like to me. VSB will confirm, and hey-ho, that's amazing. Yep, confirmed. So, thanks, Rob Waddell. Shipping's on me. I'll be mailing it out as soon as I see you post up a $3,000 donation on the GoFundMe page. I hope that works out for you. If that method doesn't work, we'll discuss an alternative. But throw $3,000 up on the GoFundMe. Put it in Cookie Monster's name or something. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. And uh, killer. 
That deserves another dab, eh? Get to work, I was gonna say, but I got like these three varieties, and uh, I gotta admit, okay, where is it? So this is the Rockstar, and this is the OG Kaya Kush. Oh no, Kaya Kush. I think I'm gonna go back to the Kaya Kush. Super tasty Kush we got here. Again, this dab is brought to you by Shatterbeard Extracts. Shatterbeard is helping MMAR patients, NPR or med whatever, medical patients in Canada uh, with their medicine. So if you are a medical patient in Canada, you can fuck the LPs. You don't have to pay at exorbitant prices. You can totally get good quality medicine from a mom and pop business located on the West Coast. Good honest people, you got my pledge, you got their pledge, and good feedback all around. So anyway, let's just get my nail out of the kiln. I'm still giggling about the day I uh, figured that one out. Been popping and cracking and breaking nails like just like crazy. Just like making so many nails and then I realized, oh man. Sometimes you gotta bop your head against the brick wall a few times, eh? Alright, so Shadow Beard Extracts, this one is delicious, Kaya Kush. Hitting it out of my glass gathering bong. Oh yeah, I did uh, actually load, I put some water in this bad boy so we could, I could show you a little close up water test, so check that out. And the smoke splits both ways, goes up the cookies. Yoo-hoo! Congratulations, Rob Waddell. That's killer. All right, so now let's continue with the show. The show must go on. We're doing a two-pull. So we've got the color wrapped around the carbon, but I noticed it's a little loose. See that white just slid out of there? It's a little loose, so if we go with this, we're gonna get uh, a gap in our pattern, so. We need to deal with that right away. Now, what I do is, you can, you got a couple choices. If it's not fade to clear, you need to now pick, see the colors you've picked, go through your color stash, and see if you've got a slightly wider color, if you've got room. If it's a bit too tight, then now it's, that's good, so we wanna check that. If it's too tight and it doesn't fit in, then you know you need to replace a couple thick ones with thinner ones. In this case, I do have the room and so I'm just gonna spread it, and it looks like I've got almost enough room for one more of these clear. Let's see if that'll work. So we'll jam one more clear in here. Flush it up on the end. And now I've got my 50 mil cold tester. And oh, it does fit, look at that. It's a little, that is super tight. So if you're a beginner doing this, I would give yourself just a little more give than that but I'm gonna do it like that and I'll show you what happens if it, if maybe if it's too tight, if you get stuck halfway, maybe that'll happen to us and we'll work that out. So, I've got one in the kiln already. Same size, uh, 50 mil by five. Let's, we can get proceeding. Woo, good extracts. Now, uh, if you wanna try all of them, and, and I mean all of them, you got lots of choices on the West Coast, but uh, just want to remind you, I'm looking at the Kind Selections here, and uh, they recently helped a family member of mine, uh, Kind Selections. Real knowledgeable, helpful staff, and uh, again, a mom and pop business, and uh, provides lots of options from gel caps to muscle creams to extracts. Yeah, all right. Well, take my dome off. Oh, don't forget to put the nail back in the kiln. That's the one thing I always forget to do. All right, so, get to work, eh? Ho, ho. Hey, my beard light turned off. Here we go. Bing! Red beard. It's all in the beard light. You know it. All right. So, where did I put that bundle of color? All rock and ready to go. You could dust it off now, maybe, if you wanted to. And note, I've got the elastics definitely halfway back at least. This is the part I'm gonna melt. 
and uh, the first step is to melt it onto a piece of uh, 32 roughly millimeter, 32, 33. So uh, what I'm going to do is, I've got these on a pull point handle. The first thing I'm going to do is put it on a 12 mil blow tube. And that's just uh, a stronger handle. There's going to be a lot of weight on this. We're going to weld the color stack to this. So always think about the, uh, the handle that's going to hold everything. Make sure it's good. A little bubble trash. Pop that. So I'll just go ahead and I'll weld this 12 mil on. It just real quick happens. Bam. Just make sure it's a good solid hot seal. No ridges, no bullshit. That's not going to break. It's got to be nice and strong. No devitrification. Just like that. Just a good seal. Let's tear off the other end and flare it open a bit. I hope I get my new kiln soon. Been waiting on that to do a couple repairs here. I still got that loyal viewer ripples piece here. We're gonna fix that this week. Needs a, a new chamber right here damn thing drinks water and then this awesome piece uh, I made at uh, Hemp City we've got to fix that too maybe we'll do that on an upcoming show as well it's just got a little bit of a divot in the side just needs a little polished polish and uh, I did get a message from those guys I think I'm headed back to Kelowna sometime soon and then the other store in Kelowna my great guys down at Mary Jane uh, email me and they're putting in a whole freaking teaching studio in there so it looks like they're trying to open around March and uh, they'll be having lessons and classes available in Kelowna <coughs> perhaps I'll be doing a course out of there but my teacher Sibo is on the uh, line for teaching courses there so that's an exciting opportunity if you're uh, in the area you can get lessons in the next couple months in Kelowna Hemp City's also talking about lessons, so it's really great to see these shops get on the glass blow in front. Okay, so I just flared that open. Uh, nothing fancy, just a quick little flare. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld this to that. And this is the, the color rods and the clear to that. Now this weld has got to be good. It has got to be good. Uh, this is the one you do not want to break. Okay? This like, I just can't stress that enough. Make sure you do this one right. It sucks when it, all your color breaks open inside the tube. That, uh, that ain't an option. Alright, adjust my flame here a little bit. So I've got some Crayola yellow and some uh, kind of jade green it looks like. Uh, whatever green that is forest green and uh, probably a star white or a troutman white all of those colors like a fairly oxidizing flame you never want to be too close to your torch with pure color that color is not coated and clear yet so it's really sensitive to the flame we got to be careful what type of flame we allow it to touch so I'm using a very oxidizing flame far out that's allowing the flame to cool down enough uh, so it's not boiling the glass because that's simply what those bubbles are is boiling glass whereas clear can take a little more direct heat without boiling okay so let's go ahead and weld these two together again we're just going to take a second and make sure these are nicely welded flame adjustment on the fly And the last thing I'm going to do here is marver it to make sure it fits into that tube. Remember, it's going to be a tight squeeze. So as it hardens up, I'm just rolling it down on my marver pad. And now while it's still slightly soft, I'm going to pull my carbon most of the way out. Slide one elastic off, get the other one to the edge. And now I'm going to slide them both off. Boom. Now I'm going to use my hand to just close it up circular. 
Now quickly I gotta get this out of the kiln, my old shitty kiln without a doggy door. Yeehaw! Dust it off, out of the way. Get dust in it. And now uh, I think I took a little too long, so I'm gonna re whoops, I'm gonna reflash just near the uh, base of the color and just round up real quick again. And now it goes in the tube. Perfect. All the, as far in as you can. There we go. So now I got it in there. I'm going to stop rotating and I'm going to heat one side way up at the edge of the clear tube. I'll show you in a second exactly where I am, but I'm going to tag this to the inner 32 mil core. Heating it in one spot, reach down and tag. See that? Tagged right there. Okay, quickly go to the other exact opposite of that tag. I'm going to tag it again. This is going to prevent that color from wobbling around inside there. Reach down and just tag. Give it one extra flame to make sure you don't have any crazy acutes. So there's the tags. You see those? All right. Now I'm going to just burn off the other end. And this is my pull point, the, the handle on the 50 mil. That's just going to get pulled off. And I've got a, a good 14 mil handle ready. A nice, thick fucking handle. No, no wimpy 8 mil handle here, okay? Make note of that. It's got to be strong enough to carry the weight. Cranking up my flame. Maybe we'll even engage a bit of magnum. I haven't used that torch in a little while. Woohoo! You gotta love the Delta Mag. I know I do. So now it's a matter of uh, melting it down from this end all the way to this end. And I gotta thank again Dirty Dave Limited for the long sleeve motherfucking shirt. If you're a glass blower, you can appreciate the long sleeves. Because uh, cotton is my best friend when it comes to this. This is 100% organic cotton, as all of his t-shirts are. And uh, for flame protection, honestly, uh, cotton's right up there with uh, Kevlar. In my opinion, it really is. Uh, if you're really getting into the fucking heat, wear two layers of cotton. But uh, I tell you, it works wonders. It's wonderful. You don't want too large of a, uh, if you do a silk, uh, not a silk screen, but the uh, heat transfer uh, vinyl stickers, I've got a couple of those peel off while I blow glass. And actually they get so hot they burn your chest. But anyway, I want to thank Dirty Dave Limited again for his sponsorship. Get down to CCHQ and get yourself some, some cool threads, all organic cotton or hemp. Okay, I'm just going to go back down to the Mirage flame here. So this is going to take a few minutes and it's going to glow bright as fuck white so you can't see it but basically I'm going to start at this end and work my way to this end and it's hot as fuck doing it and now's my last chance to have a drink so get to work, stay hydrated good work is good karma folks a wise man once told me that. So just stirring this side, you can actually wait a few minutes. I was a little premature there. I'm just going to start letting the uh, air go to the right. You can really see it. You can just see it happen. Uh, you're just chasing the air. It just looks like a line of air. So this technique, uh, it's probably going to take me about... Uh, 15 or 20 minutes here to heat the whole thing. It's an arm burner. It's a sweater for sure. No, and I gotta turn up the dead for sure. Yeah! Uh, I've got my raw 
roller is just here in front of me. I'll be reaching up and using them real soon. In fact, maybe I should do that before I get both hands involved. You can still take this left handle off while I'm getting started. Here's the roller head. Good set of rollers, man. Saves you. Now I just gotta set it there and I can roll away. So I don't know if I mentioned, I want to thank all the bidders on the uh, Cookie Monster Bong. Everyone who uh, considered contributing, I appreciate that. And everyone who shared the album, I appreciate that as well. It takes a community to raise a child. It takes a community to raise the funds to fight the man. So uh, sometimes it does anyway. And then that's the case here. And as well, I want to remind you now that my mind's on it, we've got some MMAR Coalition Against Repeal events coming up. And I will be making some glass for those too, because I'm in the given spirit. And uh, that's a cause near and dear to me. My grow room's right behind, right behind me here. I've got plants drying up to my left here. I grow my own food, I grow my own medicine, I grow my own meat. Imagine the government telling me I can't. I just, I can't fathom that. I live pretty far up on the mountain, so I'm pretty sure whatever goes down, I'm gonna continue to grow my own chicken and my own meat, but, uh, and my own medicine, but it's, it's just a ridiculous fight. And so uh, I encourage you to uh, support these two legal battles. The MMAR Coalition Against Repeal has a long ways to go before we're done. Lots of money to raise yet. Nice and hot. So when you're doing this, uh, it's real easy to tend to pull your arms apart too quickly. Like, or too, like you just naturally pull your arms apart. So I've got that side is just molten. But uh, I'm being careful not to pull my hands apart. And also, it looks like uh, it looks like the color is not up against itself. I got a gap. I totally got a gap. This is the first time that's ever happened, I think, honestly. So what I did, I just did a quick marver, trying to bring the color down against itself. We'll see if we can close that gap for the rest of the tube. I've honestly never had that happen, so I'm not really sure how to fix it, but that seems in my head to be what I would do. Anyway, onward ho. Sweat's just dripping off me now. I feel it down, running down my chest and my back. In the summer when I do this, I tend to have a puddle of sweat underneath my each elbow and as well my chin eventually drips through the beard. It's a beard drenching experience, I tell you. And that's why we have these massive uh, exhaust fans. I've got a 14 inch box squirrel fan right in front of me. And it's still hot as fuck in here. Yeah, I closed the gap. So I only lost about a third of that too. And if you call it a loss, I'll find something to do with it. But uh, yeah, awesome. So I was able to marver that close, that's good. Or I don't know if I did actually, maybe it just was closed on its own, but the gap is closed, that's good. So this is what we're doing here, slowly pulling it out. I'm not sure how much the camera is picking up, it's just so fucking hot, probably white hot, yeah, it's just white hot. Here's where you gotta go to stage three liquid just to chase the air out. It's a real patient technique. You just gotta ride that air wave. It's so slow. It's like the slowest surf in the world. But you can massage it, pull your hands together in and out. That helps the air just close up. I try not to do much pulling until I get complete, but you could pull the tube as you go here. So before 
before you start this technique, you want to make sure that you cleared your bench of all combustibles. No lighters in front of you. You want to make sure you've got uh, your punty rod, your big 14 mil ready. You got to have your 12 mil blow tubes ready. Make sure you drink a good drink before you start. And, and medicate well because you've got a bit of a go before you can have a break.
get it all done. On future episodes, we'll talk about crucible dip tube bolts. We did some of that at the gathering. You can see some of that during the glass gathering movie. Just heating this piece of tubing up as evenly as I can. And we'll pull that out. just like I did. So every time you make a piece, it involves a prep work like that, like this. It's, it's the work you don't see. It's a massive amount of work. This was made with the uh, second place Karma Cup tubing. Woo! Anyway, uh, I don't know if I want to do another one of those right now. I need to have a have a good hit, have a candle bag, have a dab. Oh, kind selections, dab. That's what I gotta do. It's like uh, <laughs> this is funny. It reminds me of my kids at Christmas, right? I gotta be uh, so 50-50 even, Steven, right? If I if I give one kid like a hundred bucks for the gifts, I gotta give the other kid exactly the same amount of gift, or they uh, or they let me know. Now. My two sponsors haven't been letting me know, but that's the same feeling I got. I gotta, I gotta make sure I like smoke equal dabs from from both from both guys. Anyway, so we're gonna hit some kind selection shatter. This is the pink Kush shatter. Pretty awesome. going to portion off. Oh, it's, it's, uh, oh, that's because it's so hot. That's why. I was like, it's not quite shattered. It's kind of soft. It's, it's in the shop. It's hot in here. I also like, uh, well, my hands are a bit dirty, so I'm going to get some dirty dabs here, but I like rolling it out into a snake on my dabber and then just slowly lowering that down into. So I made myself a little nerd, a little worm. Woo! So it looks like we raised 
$3,000 for Kirk Tussauds and John Conroy to argue the case. I've read through uh, a lot of the details. I think we got a really good case. And like uh, Ted Smith was saying, when it all happened, he was kind of, uh, I don't remember how he said it, but he was excited about the prospect of the case because he knew he had a real good option to fight the government on this one. He's been waiting for this. He's been building up material and information and, and, uh, and the case itself for years now. So uh, well done to Ted Smith and Owen Smith and gang. And, uh, and a hello and I love you to Gail Quinn. Man, I hope I can get over to the island to see you guys. I'm trying to plan a visit up that way. Got some good people to see. All right, so this dab is brought to you by Kind Selections. Excuse my dirty dome, damn. That's nice, beautiful. I love you. <laughs> this is the OG, I believe, right? Oh, pink Kush. Yeah. Mmm. That's good. What can I say? It's the bomb. If you want good meds like this, get a hold of Kind Selections. It's gorgeous. And effective and fast. I want to thank my other sponsors. Vancouver Sea Bank and Toker's Lounge. I tell you, I'm going through your seed list right now, boys and ladies. It's time to get planning for outdoor. We've been talking a, a real throwback in time, the uh, purple pine berry. Might try to put a few of those out this year. Was looking at, uh, I always did a really good, some time warp always did well for me in uh, where I'm going. I'm up on the side of a mountain with uh, uh, a black water line going, oh man, long ways. I couldn't even guess. Half a kilometer through the bush from the source. I'll try to take some uh, film of the outdoor patch this summer and we'll show a couple clips on the Red Beard Show. But uh, early wonder skunk, kind of the solar warrior. Anyway, I'm excited to make some extracts out of the outdoor. I'm also excited about my new sponsor, Remo Brands, Remo Nutrients. I've got the uh, got the ladies on your food right now, and I got to tell you, they they were totally showing signs of deficiencies uh, before I started with your food. So it'll be a very good test. I'm really looking forward. I just did a transplant. All the lights are on. They're in the bigger pots. Uh, I didn't bring any out to show you. Sorry, folks. I was just a little hectic today. But uh, I'm looking forward to the balance of uh, the new pot size. And, I'm, and I hope they really like the new food as much as I like the new food. <laughs> so thanks again, Remo. Uh, kudos. I look forward to watching more of your awesome videos. And I think I'm going to call it a show, folks. That was a sweaty-ass two-pole. I could do another one. Uh, or you could just watch the show over again. Yeah, <laughs> see? Just, just go watch the show again if you want to see another tooth pull. Because I'll probably pull more tooth, but i got to take a few minute break and cool down and have a few more dabs and chill with my band, the dead. So remember, if you're in the Chicago area, I want you to give me a holla. I want to park my bus at your house. Maybe blow some glass in your laneway if you want me to. And uh, generally, uh, you know, mooch, mooch, a, mooch a spot off you. <laughs> I'm actually hoping there's a glass bone shop in Chicago I can go do uh, a collab at because I am going to get tickets for that show. So thanks a lot, folks. And please, if you got a minute and a dollar, go check out the GoFundMe page where the Cookie Monster money's going at the Cannabis Extract Case. I'll put a link up on my... Uh, it's all over the Facebook. You can easily find it. Go give them five bucks. And uh, we'll see you next week. Cheers. Yeah.